This week, we come to you from the RV capital of the world and the RVMH Hall of Fame and Museum. We are joined by Ryan Zalarek, who is going to talk a little bit about this amazing place. Plus, we chat about cargo carrying capacity, and we have a tip that will keep your black tank hooked up to your sewer connection every single time. This is the RV Miles Podcast. RV Miles is sponsored by L.L. Bean, dedicated to helping you experience all the benefits of time outside and stay more comfortable while you're out there. From soft and breathable activewear designed to do it all, to just right layers perfect for changing weather, to sun smart clothing that blocks the sun's harmful rays, every L.L. Bean product is made with comfortable time outside in mind. Visit LLBean.com to shop now. L.L. Bean. B an outsider. Welcome to episode 208 of the RV Miles podcast. I'm Jason. And I'm Abby. And we are two full-time travelers who, along with our three boys, have been crisscrossing North America since 2016 on one epic road trip. Here at RV Miles, we talk about everything from lifestyle and destinations to industry news, our national parks, and so much more. We're excited to be coming to you here from the RV and Manufactured Housing Hall of Fame and Museum in wonderful Elkhart, Indiana. This is a really cool place and we're gonna uh, share a little bit more about it later in the show. Uh, But we are here in Elkhart to pick up our new fifth wheel. In three more days from when we're recording this podcast, we're picking up our new fifth wheel and we could not be more excited. Yeah, this is starting to feel really real (laughs) as the days get closer and closer. And you know, for all of you who joined us on our live last night, which we were coming to you from our hotel here in Elkhart, We talked a lot about that and we were so overwhelmed by the enthusiasm by all of you, which we'll get to in our fresh tank later on. But yeah, this time next week when we record episode 209, we will actually be in the fifth wheel at a KOA. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Uh, All right. Let's kick off the show here, though, with a question from Brittany from the RV Miles Facebook group. It's about cargo carrying capacity. One thing that's been tripping us up is the cargo carrying capacity, or CCC, on a lot of these rigs. Some seem very low. They're asking about our Sabre. The Sabre in the floor plan they're looking at is 2,400, but they found a few that have a CCC of over 3,500. The availability of the higher CCC ones has been very limited, though, and it has made it difficult trying to purchase our first rig. What has been your experience with CCC requirements for a full-time family? Well, you know, we are going from the Heartland Pioneer QB300, which is what we've been traveling in for two years. That was only... 1900, 18, I think somewhere in between there. And, you know, we're a family of five and we were able to make that work. Now, to be fair, that's smaller than most full timers with a family of our size would do. Oh, absolutely. A a smaller vehicle. The cargo capacity, not so much though. I'd say 2400, what you're looking at is about average probably. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think my point being with that though was that we were able to do it and we were able to do it comfortably. Mm -hmm. I don't think we wanted for a whole lot. We still had toys and books and games and school supplies and clothes and camping gear and ever tons of food and plenty of kitchen accessories and everything that we needed for the most part to be comfortable. Now we did sacrifice some things. We didn't bring yeah. the KitchenAid. We, you know, we only have the instant pot. We certainly were very mindful of that weight and we had to be. And we've had friends that have had to, you know, give stuff away on the road because they're like, whoa, we're way too heavy. Hello, can't um, have this much weight. And also to be fair, when we had our bus conversion, we probably had like 10,000 pounds of cargo wow. capacity that we could have used and we packed that thing pretty solid. Yeah, we really utilized all of that. So <laughs> it was pretty difficult to go from when we were in the bus conversion down to the travel trailer. We had to utilize storage for sure. And now I feel like we have absolutely won the lottery. I'm just bring me all the things because I think we are going up to somewhere around 
26, 27. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, actually, I think it's more. I think it's 29. Do you think it's, it's 29? 29. I'm going to yeah. need some confirmation on that because that's going to be whether or not I break out like, you know, the the KitchenAid. Well, you always have to look at the final one that you're getting because the options, you know, will, will change mm-hmm. what it is. Uh, but I, I, you also have to realize, too, that sometimes better cargo carrying capacity might mean that there's less materials in the inside the unit to build it. You know, uh, it's lighter weight, um, which is giving you that extra space, um, but maybe it's not as well built. That's not always true either. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think you can get away with 2,400. Um, I, I think you could get away with 1,900. Yeah. I, I, again, we did. And I again, it just comes down to priorities a little bit as well. And I would caution anyone, if you're going and let's say you have 2,400, when you leave, when you get on the road for the first time as a full-timer, do not be maxed. Don't be maxed. Try to come in comfortably under, 10% under, because you know, while you're on the road, you're going to get stuff. I mean, that's the thing we would go to. We love going to bookstores. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets a book. Well, books are heavy. So everyone brings a book in. You have to offset that. If you are already at that 2,400 max pound weight and you bring in five books, a book for everyone, well, you're over. And over time, you might think, well, Abby, that's just a few pounds. But that starts to add up over time. And then you know what really stinks when you've got some major frame issues because you've just got too much in there. You know, usually it does come down to the number of axles. It's it's always kind of a least common denominator thing. And uh, if you're two axles, you're probably going to be somewhere in the 2000s range. And then mm-hmm. the third axle uh, is going to put you up into the 3000 range often. And often that's going to be a toy hauler um, that has that ad- additional weight. And yeah. Those are popular um, right now, but they also don't make as many that have the highest cargo carrying capacity. So it's a little bit harder to find. And you have to remember that the more cargo carrying capacity you have, the bigger truck you're going to need. So when you go up to that third axle, you're looking at a pretty massive truck in order to Yeah, three three axles is, is duly diesel range for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So it just, it's, again, it's just expense upon expense upon expense. So there's a lot of things to take into consideration as full timers when it comes to just how much stuff do we need versus how much stuff do we want. Yeah. So this also comes from the Facebook group. Uh, uh, Someone shared a a video from, (laughs) from Supercar Blondie, which is probably my my dad's favorite influencer on social media. I actually really enjoy her she videos. She's fantastic. So if she's you don't, if, so good. If you don't know who she is, she tests and reviews and shows like multi-million dollar supercars. Often. Her access to the industry <laughs> is insane. Yes. Like, I mean, she's right up there with with the guys from... Uh, she's Top from, Gear. From Top Gear. And, yeah, she's Top yeah. Gear on YouTube. Yeah. So she... Uh, she put out a video recently that was about uh, about towing, mm-hmm. which was really interesting. Uh, and it's we I think a lot of us have seen on social media this video of uh, of a model car pulling would... a model trailer on a treadmill. And this is th- this is sort of an upgraded version of that, right? Yes, and she was working with a company called WaySafe, and they were using an ATV as the weight example. And they were showing what happens if you have most of your weight up front of the trailer, middle, and back. And there is a huge difference between the majority of the weight at the front of your trailer versus even just the middle. And they did this at different speed ranges as well to show. And it's really just, even if you think, oh, I know all this, I've seen it before. It's such a good reminder. And it's something we talk a lot about because so many people are concerned about it. And we've seen so many stories where there have been unfortunate accidents due to weight distribution, hitting the wind, hitting you at a certain speed. Absolutely worth going and just watching again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you can do this yourself too by going to uh, a truck scale, a cat scale often at truck stops. And you can you can measure your axle weights. And it's best to if you have a trailer to unhook your trailer and 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 weigh just the truck and just the trailer or you know just the the whole rig and then 
adjust the truck and subtract the truck, however you want to do it. And then you can get what your actual weights are to see if you're within that cargo carrying capacity that we talked about earlier. This is my version of... <laughs> way distribution utopia. So I'm going to need us to do this because this is always a constant concern of mine. And I think if you go to one of those scales, I think a lot of people know this now too, but you can get all that information via an app. Yeah. Yeah. And so you can have all of that right there on your phone to access the minute you need to see it or the minute you want to know exactly where you stand. And they char it's like 14 bucks, but they charge you less for the second way. So you can go pull your whole rig on, do pay the 14 bucks, and you can pay right on the app as mm -hmm. well. And, and then go into their parking lot and unhook and then drive your truck across it to get your truck's loaded weight as well. It's a great tip. You should go and do it. Just stay safe on the road. And we're going to link to that video. And you're going to find that over at rvmiles.com slash 208. And of course, we want to invite you to come over and join the RV Miles Facebook group because that's where all these great discussions are happening. And there are so many people who are offering such wise words of wisdom and they are doing it in an incredibly kind way. So thank you to everyone who's already there and who is sharing their thoughts. We're going to take a break and we're going to be right back with Ryan Zalerik from the RV and Manufactured Housing Hall of Fame and Museum. We'll be right back. Find your next camping adventure with the Spot Tonight app. Spot Tonight offers real-time visibility across numerous campgrounds available for immediate booking. Easy to use and free to download. With Spot Tonight, you can build a travel profile, share parks with friends via messaging, and mark your favorite campgrounds. Travelers can search for specific parks that meet their exact needs for tonight and beyond. No more blind searches in hopes of finding an available spot. Simply look, book, and go. Campground owners download the Spot Tonight app and see how your park can join a vastly expanding network. For more information, visit spottonight.com, that's spot, the number two, nite.com, or simply download the app in the Apple or Google Play stores. Look, book, and go with Spot Tonight. Electrical surge protection is one of the cheapest insurance policies you can provide for your RV and the Power Watchdog Smart Surge Protector made by Hughes Autoformers beats the competition with field replaceable surge modules. With other brands, when the surge protector takes a large surge or a spike, you have to throw it away. The Power Watchdog can be brought back to life with one small affordable part you can replace yourself. They'll even give you a free surge module in the first two years. And now they have a limited lifetime warranty. Use the coupon code RVMILES, all one word, for 10% off your order at HughesAutoformers.com. That's code RVMILES for 10% off at HughesAutoformers.com. I'm here with Ryan Zalerik from the RV and Manufactured Housing Hall of Fame and Museum. Ryan, tell us about this place. Uh, so this, this is a, a basically a relic to the RV and the manufactured housing industry and the whole point of this facility is to represent those industries as well as we can. We try to represent the past, the present, and the future. Um, and so right behind us you've got 61 antique RVs starting with the 1913 going into about the mid 70s and some of the the units that are down there are just absolutely unbelievable and it's so fun for people to come in and see where the industry started and then as they get into conversations with the people here or they see the people that are on the wall in the hall of fame they start to learn why the industry started where it did where it got to and then where it's going in the future which the sky is the limit for RVing right now that they can't build them fast enough <laughs> <laughs> so that's basically what we're trying to encompass in this facility so we're in Elkhart Indiana the RV capital of the world where the vast majority of them are, are manufactured. How did this place come about and when did it come about and how did that all happen? Okay, so it started in 1972. At first it was on paper. Uh, it wasn't until 1978, I believe, that it actually had a physical building and that was in downtown Elkhart. Um, much smaller than this facility, probably about a quarter of the size. And it wasn't until 2005 that they outgrew that facility and started campaigning for where we're at right now. Um, in 2007, this building came to fruition, and uh, that's basically the evolution of why it's right here. But the reason is because 80% of all the RVs in North America are made within 50 miles where we're standing. So it made sense to have the Hall of Fame and the museum here. And, uh, and we're right along the interstate, and if, if people want to come visit, this is, you're actually a Harvest Host location, right? Yes, and that has been a phenomenal thing for us to get involved with. 
Um, we've seen this year we're going to have a pretty substantial increase in actual paid attendance. We're going to have more guests come here basically than we ever have in the past. And we've been in, un involved with the Harvest Host I think for two years. And usually when I leave this facility at night there's at least 10 to 15 campers out there. Wow. And cool. so they all come in to get to see the place and um, it's just been awesome. And we've never had an issue. Yeah. It's been well, that's fantastic. The, I think the Harvest Host has been great for for museums across the country, especially during the pandemic, that keeping a lot of farms and wineries and museums alive um, mm -hmm. with, with some customers. What's your favorite unit out here? Um, that's a tough question. Um, I guess it depends on whether it's the actual, what it looks like <laughs> or who it belonged to. Sure. We have a unit in here that belonged to Mae West, the, the oh. famous movie star. Yeah. And uh, it was actually built for her as an incentive to uh, start doing movies for Paramount Studios. And uh, at first, it, she was doing movies in vaudeville, and they basically said, you know, we're going to build you this luxury trailer so that you have all these amenities on the road. And it was a draw for her, and she took the bait. And uh, we have the unit sitting back there. Um, I'd say my favorite one is probably the Hunt house car. It's okay. a, a 1928 but it looks like a 2030. I can't imagine being on the road in 1928 and seeing that thing buzz by. It's amazing some of the <laughs> some of the early trailer travelers and the roads that they must have had to deal with. Oh my gosh, then. I can't and even believe it. The, with very limited suspension in their vehicles. Yeah, and, <laughs> and limited campgrounds and, and all that sort of stuff. So so Mae West really started the, the, the star trailer craze. Yeah, I know. I now it's become an extraordinarily popular fad, and, yeah. and that was really the first that we'd heard of. Um, and sitting here in the museum, now and people Will love Smith it. has a two-story, yeah, <laughs> basically condo. I know. <laughs> uh, well, talk to me about visiting this place. What do people need to know about coming here and experiencing the museum? Uh, for people who are coming here, I think the first thing to know is what we talked about before. If you have a trailer, you're welcome to stay the night in the lot. Now it's it's dry camping. Um, we do have a dump station that's available if people need to use it. You just ask the people at the desk and they'll find somebody to go unlock it for you. Uh, we're just off the interstate, so it's extremely easy to access. It's a great checkpoint if you're doing a night's worth of traveling to come and stop and get a few hours of sleep, come into the museum in the morning and get on your way. And not only that, we get a lot of people who come here because the manufacturers are here and when they need service done on their units, it's a great day trip for them to go drop off their unit and come on over here and see the museum. The cost is between $9 if uh, you have a, a military background to $12 if you're a regular adult. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about the Hall of Fame aspect of this place. It's obviously the main portion of the name, so how does that fit in here? Well, it is. In order to get support of the industries, that's really the aspect of this organization that that ties us into what's going on in today's world as far as RVing and manufactured housing goes. There's over 400 people that have been inducted into Hall of Fame and uh, you have to work in the industry for over 25 years and then you get nominated by your peers um, and then we go through a, a process with an anonymous committee that then decides who's going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame and actually this coming Monday, August 16th, is our big induction dinner. And so we'll have over 600 people in our event center, which uh, can hold up to about 1,100 people. We celebrate and they get a chance to speak just like you would at any other Hall of Fame. And so really the Hall of Fame part is what, you know, it makes the, the present section of what we, we stand for. Sure. Yeah, that, that's where that comes into play. So it is a Hall of Fame. Sure. And so the museum is, is an addition to it, even though it's become everybody's favorite part, <laughs> right. of course, because it's awesome. <laughs> but uh, really, we're a Hall of Fame, and that's that's why this organization exists. Awesome. Well, Ryan Zalaric, thanks so much for joining <laughs> us today on the podcast. Absolutely. If you've been considering purchasing a solo stove, the award-winning stoves and fire pits designed with a patented airflow system now is the perfect time. Through August 26th, Solo Stove is having a site-wide sale on some of their most popular items, including 25% off fire pits like the Bonfire, an RV Miles favorite, for only $255. Other deals include 30% off camp stoves, 35% off fire pit accessories, and more. 
RV Miles listeners can save an extra $10 off their purchase of $100 or more when you head over to rvmiles.com slash solo stove and use the link and promo code in the article. That's rvmiles.com slash solo stove for an extra $10 off the sale price. We want to thank Ryan Zalarek again from the RV and Manufactured Housing Hall of Fame and Museum. Uh, we also want to mention that they're building a whole new addition here of a manufactured housing wing that Ryan is actually designing. 21,000 square feet feet. That's phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. So the manufactured housing is a big portion of this and that, but it goes back to like, he said, like the early 1900s, like yeah. 1918, you know, we all talk about the RVs and motorhomes, but manufactured housing is, is just as big to this industry as well in terms of, you know, things like uh, trailers and, and uh, sort of pre-built housing. Yeah, and you know how I love anything old-timey, so I'm very excited for this. <laughs> Ryan told us that it is scheduled to open July 1st of 2022, and he is actually going to be an actor in yeah, this gonna virtual be, tour. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah, it's going to be like a, a, a sort of digital experience with his like image projected and <laughs> yeah. taking you through it, so that's going to be cool. I can't wait to return to see it. <laughs> All right, it's time to check the level of our tanks, Abby. What is in your black tank this week? Okay, my black tank goes to the bathroom light in our hotel room. Okay, this light is motion censored. Well, it's not actually the, it's the bathroom, but it's like, it's it's one of those hotels that has a vestibule for like the sink area with no door on it, right? Yeah, it's a two bathroom bathroom. So in the sense of like where you wash your hands and you know, the, the, the counter, yeah, the vanity. Thank you. There's the word I'm looking for. Vanity. The vanity and the closet are out front, and then you have a door, and then there's the bathroom with the shower. There's no door where the vanity is, and that light is motion censored, and it is so bright. It's one of those makeup lights around the mirror. So when you get up in the middle of the night, like some of us have to do because we've had three children, and you need to go to the restroom, you have now illuminated your entire sleeping space, and children do not like when bright lights come on in their face at four o'clock in the morning. (laughs) So I'm not sure what the thought process here was other than someone who has never had to go pee in the middle of the night totally designed this. Yeah. And uh, there's no off switch for it. No, no, you can't. And so I even this morning when I got up and I needed to use the restroom, I was hugging the other wall, trying to make myself as tiny as possible in hopes that I wouldn't. (laughs) You're going to avoid avoid the sensor. You're like a burglar (laughs) getting under the lasers. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) And I failed miserably. Uh, uh, And of course, it (laughs) woke up a kid. Um, And then I was awoken by a kid who had to get up in the middle of the night, too. And what's funny is that... (laughs) This kid was like, I, I'm so tired. I'm not even going to bother to turn that light off. And I, I said, you go turn that light off. Like, the whole room is so bright right now. Yet another reason to travel in an RV. Oh. You can make the changes to your living space yourself. Oh, I cannot wait to be back in our <laughs> own home. Speaking of what is in your fresh tank this week. So my fresh tank goes to all of you out there who are watching and listening today and who over the last several months have just been so encouraging and kind and generous genuinely excited for us that we are moving into this new fifth wheel. I I think sometimes when I feel sort of downtrodden about there's a there's a lot of heavy in the world, right? And I have to say this community that we are so blessed to be a part of here at RV Miles you all just lift me up on a regular basis. And you did that last night on the live. You did that in the Facebook group when I shared a picture of us driving to Elkhart. I mean, thank you. So thank you for your kindness, but just thank you for caring about us and caring about our kids and being excited that we're doing this because it has just made this really celebratory. And so I I just wanted to give you all my fresh tank and, and say thank you. All right. All right, there it is. I'm going to try not to cry. Jason, what is in your black tank this week? Uh, My black tank is Interstate 80 uh, in the Chicagoland area and into Indiana. Well, I guess you're on 90 once you're in Indiana, mm-hmm. but uh, I 80. You are drunk. Go home. This whoa. it's a mess. I, well, it's 80 slash 90. In, in yeah. The, it, it. Oh my God. It is the the construction. Uh, I, I don't think they're doing anything, but the the road is in terrible shape. But then it's awful. They've got construction barriers prepared for construction, so it's one of those situations where you've got a terrible road and then K rails right on the lane lines, so it's it's right up against you, and you've just got no room to move. We're trying to figure out an alternative route to get this fifth wheel home yeah, because we can I go that will direction. 
I will be darned if that thing gets dinged on our very first drive because Illinois has come at us. Looks like, like we're I, taking the back roads. We are taking the back roads. And if that means it's two days to get where we're going, it is two days to get where we're going because it's very dangerous out there on this highway. And I don't say that because I'm just trying to like, I'm, I'm concerned about our fifth wheel. It's dangerous on this highway well, it's one of those for large situ- automobiles. It, 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 we're, it's one of the situations where you, you um, it really ought to be one lane. Yes. When they've 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 given you just the bare minimum of the two lanes, and it's like let's just make this one lane with extra room. And I know that they're doing that because this is a heavy populated and trafficked area, and they're trying to keep from massive backups happening. But what is going to happen if it hasn't already is there will be accidents. People's cars are going to scrape up along the side. There's it's just really it's a mess. And if it's not under construction, the road itself is just trashed it's trashed and i i don't know jay i don't know how we're getting back to where we need to go (laughs) all right what is in your fresh tank this week Uh, my fresh tank is actually a a vehicle that is here sylvan sport trailers sylvan sport if you aren't aware we we actually have some of their accessories which are really awesome as well we have their camp kitchen um that's called the dynamite that we (laughs) really that love and they, they make different versions of that as well but they also make trailers um, really niche um, lightweight small trailers and here they have uh, up at the RV um, museum they have a Sylvan Sport pop-up that has got to weigh like 20 pounds <laughs> the thing is so tiny uh, but big inside and, and something that you can really get out there in the middle of nowhere with and I really would love something like oh, that one no. day. <laughs> I really would. Sylvan Sport, they're very expensive, but they make these really unique trailers. And you should check them out if you're looking for something more in the lightweight adventure rig type of RV. Which we're not looking for right now. No, we've got too many people for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's time to wrap up the show with our community tip. And this one comes from Skip in the RV Miles Facebook group. Skip posted in the group, uh, a great way to weigh down your your sewer hose connection. Mm-hmm. If, if you've never seen, um, they sell them in stores at, like Camping World and stuff, weights that can actually go over the top of your sewer hose connection. You know, if it's not screwed in uh, at the sewer at the campsite so that it, it doesn't get kicked out or Ooh. or when you empty the tanks, it doesn't like blow itself out because oh. the sewer is backed up. <laughs> that can happen. Um, so it is nice if you can weigh the top of them, the, that elbow down into into the sewer, right? So uh, you can buy a weight for this, but S- Skip came up with his own little invention, and it's basically two pieces of PVC pipe with caps on the ends of them, and he put weight inside. You could put chain or rocks or whatever you want to inside them. So these two sort of almost one foot lengths of PVC pipe is just two, two inch PVC pipe. And then he put chains between the two of them. So those pipes lay down on either side of, of your sewer hose and your elbow and the chains hold it down in place. It's a really, yeah, it's a really nice snug fit. I can't remember exactly what he calls it, but I do know the word (laughs) poop was involved. So (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so we might have to look into that. What do you think something like that would cost? I haven't, you know, I haven't priced out a PVC pipe. That, so. that probably cost him no more than $10 to make. It could be scrap. Like you could get scrap for some of it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's a great DIY project. Save a little bit of money. So yeah, and, thank you, Skip. Yeah. All right. That's it for this week's episode of the RV Miles podcast. Yes, it is. And hey, as we ask every single week, if you are enjoying RV Miles, would you head over to Apple Podcast and leave us a five-star review? You can also go to rvmiles.com slash 207 and I will have a link to that in the show notes. We are only about 40 reviews away from 1,000. So come over and be our 1,000th review. We would love to read it. RV Miles is all across social media, but the very best way to get in touch with Jason and I is to join the RV Miles Facebook group with almost 11,000 of the kindest RVers out there. And of course, if you're headed over to Amazon, we want to go with you. Start at amazon.com slash shop slash RV miles and we get a little kickback from Jeff Bezos. So thanks so much for that. All right. Until next week. Thank you so much to RVMH Hall of Fame and Museum for hosting us today. Enjoy your summer, everyone. Keep camping and keep logging those RV miles. Bye, everybody. Bye.